Hey friends, and welcome back to Stronger Every Day. My name is Chrissy. It's great to be with you all today. So, you know kind of how I start my videos, and I like to, a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, I like to take verses and kind of relate them to what people who struggle with mental illness are, are, are going through. And a lot of that is um, condemnation. You're a little ashamed. Um, People obviously have their opinions about how you should act and react to things. And that's not just people that aren't Christian. That's also Christian. And that's, I think, where it's the hardest um, is fellow believers in Christ condemning you for struggling with illness. And um, I've never met someone who has... For, for me, it's depression and anxiety who says, oh, I love it. I love having this. It, it really makes me feel better about myself. And I love all the judgment I get from it. I've never met a person who has ever said that. Um, what I have encountered for oh, not only myself, but others, others that I know who struggle is that we wish it would go away right we want it to go away we've actively prayed we've talked to god in detail about it and for my own personal situation the only reason that i'm here today is because god has actively carried me through and so i want to read a couple verses and maybe bring a little bit of of understanding and a little bit of peace to some of the situations that we go through and some of the judgments the first one is luke eleven forty six. it says yes said Jesus, what sorrow also awaits you experts in religious law, for you crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. What sorrow awaits you? And, and that verse is, is not just talking, obviously, I don't want to say that I don't ever want it to come across that I'm talking about these verses are talking about depression in general. They're talking about general in general um and that's how i felt for 27 and a half years that i felt more judgment from the christian community than i did from the non-christian community and that should tell you something right there as christians we judge everyone and everything and we look at ourselves through rose-colored glasses and think that we don't ever fall into that um, we like to judge what we don't know. We like to judge what we don't understand. And yet we never lift a finger to help those who are struggling. And let me be very clear on this. There are people who you could help for years and they're not going to lift a finger to help themselves. That is not what I'm talking about. You can, people have to be accountable for their lives and their own situations. Um, if, you know, when I was struggling with depression for 27 and a half years, I had to be accountable. It wasn't someone else's job to make me happy or make me feel happy or make me feel joy or make me not be in that pit. It was, it was between me and God of, of getting out of it, right? But you can love them through it instead of condemning and, and, and con being condescending to them, to us. Um, you can call and check on us, text and check on us, whatever form of communication that you use. You can, you can let them know you're praying for them. Let them know you're thinking about them. If you have a friend that need, that has a need that needs to be met, maybe look, they're struggling and, and a little light on groceries. Maybe you go to the grocery store and buy them things, or maybe you give them a gift card to the grocery store. If you have someone who has an outstanding bill and it's something that you can afford to do, maybe you do that. Maybe it's something that doesn't involve money. Maybe you just go over and spend time with them. But it's, it's, what I, one of the things that just really just kind of went off in my head about this verse is that you never lift a finger to ease the burden. And, and that's so true, um, unfortunately. And it's, it's true in our Christian community. And then we wonder why people don't want to come to Christ because the examples that we are and the examples that we're being are not Christ-like. And so who would want to be a part of that? Um, and we wonder why it's so easy to be divided from a relationship with God because it's hard to see, it's hard to understand, it's hard to even want to understand 
having a relationship with God when you see people that have that relationship and they act the way they do. And here's a couple things. Not everybody in church is a Christian. Not everybody in church is actively pursuing God. And not everybody in church, um, there are hypocrites in church. And I say this a lot. I think most Christians are not hypocrites. We're human. I make mistakes all the time. Um, that doesn't mean I don't love God. That doesn't mean that he's not my example of who I want to be. I am actively trying to pursue to be the best version of Chrissy that I can be here on this earth. But do I still have struggles? Yes. But what I'm learning is it does no good to, to condemn. Either realize that it's not your situation, it's not your burden, and your opinion doesn't matter and move on from it, or, or show love, right? Um, show correction when correction is needed. I'm not saying that we don't tell someone in a loving, godly manner once you've prayed about it and God's given you the direction that he wants you to go talk to that person not your prideful self he god wants you to go talk to that person about something they're doing wrong i'm not saying we don't give correction with a godly intent and a godly attitude once god's released us to do that but i'm saying that we need to love more and judge less and i'm also i'm not a preacher but i'm also preaching to myself on that right that there's times that I'll hear I'll hear something or see something and I think, what is what's what's going on? What's the deal? Why can't you just be A, B, C, and D? And then I realize that I believe that all of us have the same God given opportunities. However, we're not all starting at the same start line. Um, and I hope that makes sense. I'm not going to dive too much deeper into that. I'm not here to create a controversy. I'm here to create love and support in our mental health community. But <clears throat> that's one of the verses. The other one is Matthew 7, 2. It says, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Friends, that should scare you. That should scare you. Because... When you have that relative that maybe falls off the wagon and you start condoning and judging them and criticizing them and, and, and talking about how, how horrible of a person, you would never do that. You need to realize it's in the Bible. You're going to be judged by the way you judge others. And I want God to have grace on me, right? Like, I'm not perfect. I realize that. I make mistakes every day. I was telling my supervisor the just this week that um every morning while i'm headed into work i pray god let me be your hands and feet that's my my heart is that i want to be god's hands and feet to our community and to others so everyone that i come in contact with am i always a glowing example of that no matter of fact um that day I wasn't a glowing example and I was talking to her about that and and she brought up which my husband's brought this up many times it's great that you want to be God's hands and feet that that's one of the things that we love about you is your heart to serve others but you have to understand that you're not perfect no one is perfect the only person that was ever perfect was Jesus on this earth and so I'm going to do a separate video about that, but but understanding that I, I don't want to be judged the way that I used to judge people. Um, I don't want to be judged that way. I want to show love and compassion and support and understanding. And do I, do I hit a home run every encounter with every person that I come in, in contact to? No, I, I don't. But that's my heart and hope that that I keep growing in that area until I'm as close to an expert as I can be, right? Um, and sometimes you're going to get squashed on. And sometimes you're going to get yelled at. And sometimes people aren't going to see your heart. I think we're so used to the other side of things where, you know, this, this, this generation that we're in now, we want it now. We wanted it before we asked for it. We want it to be free. We want, we want it to be given to us. We want it to be handed to us. We want no inconvenience. We want to float around on a little cloud and have all these little people just do everything that we want. That's not real life. 
and when when something interrupts our world you know we we tend to lash out and what i've noticed is is you know back not even that long ago when you went to a place and whether it be a, a shopping tip for the grocery store or clothing or shoes or the gas station even people would greet you with hey how are you and now they scan your stuff and give you a total it, it's just a different atmosphere and we're so ultra involved in ourselves. We, we, we've struggled to lack we, we lack communication abilities with all this technology which is great but we're so used to not interacting with people face to face it's all electronic that we don't even know how to interact with each other anymore um there's a, a huge difference in people my age versus people older than me and people younger than me and how we interact with people um and i correlate that with the use of electronics but that's a different different conversation for a different time i actually have a video talking about that but the other verse is matthew 18 15 through 17. um i only took one section of this it says if another believer sins against you go privately and point out that sin and that's what i was talking about earlier i'm not saying that we ignore things we don't we don't let people know when they're doing something wrong um but i don't go to people in a prideful i'm better than you and i would never do that heart god's released me twice to go to someone who was actively doing something that was inappropriate and talking with them. Um, and it was hard because you never want to bring up things that aren't sunshine and rainbows, but, but I felt released to do it and I did. So the rest of the time, if I was correcting or judging somebody, it was either gossip or it was straight from Chrissy um, of the, the prideful judgment. So I want to give you just a little bit of encouragement that, friends, you're going to be judged for every single thing you do, right? Don't focus on that. I know that's hard, but focus on God. F keep your eyes on Him. Are you going to make mistakes? Yes. Are, are things going to not go your way? Yes refocus and, and keep moving towards God. Things are going to happen through this lifetime. We're going to be judged for everything we do, mental illness or not. Keep your focus. Remember you're a child of God and that is the most important thing that you have a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ and you're his daughter, you're his son and keep moving forward every every single day. I know that it's hard when you get judged. I know it's it's even harder when you get judged in the Christian community that you're a part of. I, I get that. Or even if you're you're not actively in a church and friends, I highly encourage you to get active in a church. Start slow if that helps you. You know, go to go to service if that helps you. And then slowly, once you get a little bit more comfortable, then start kind of branching out into helps ministry or help with the nursery or help with events or help with fundraising or help with different things that your church may be a part of. Our church does a ton of different things. There's a ton of um, outreach, and that's what I love. They always they're one of the things they say is you're not giving to us, you're giving through us, and that's that's so true. And 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 what what. Um, the church gives to the community, the surrounding community, the country. Um, get involved with your church. It's the devil loves it when you segregate yourself alone. That's when he gets you the most. Is when you withdraw, and we all know that with people that struggle with mental illness, that you withdraw. So the only verse, the only voices you're hearing is yours and the devil's. Really, when you're in the pit. And, you know, God's in the very faint background. He loves it when you when you withdraw and segregate yourself. Get out there. I know it's uncomfortable. I I like to be at home. I am I am one hundred percent introverted. Um and it's easy for me to withdraw away when things are not going. There's times that I'll I'll text my husband during the day and say, When I get home, I'm gonna take my shower and then I, do, I just need a minute. I just need a minute just to decompress from all the day and and process everything that's happened. So 
it's not easy when you're being judged. It's just not easy. Nobody likes to be judged. Um, and when it's not done with God using a person versus that person just this implementing themselves into the situation, it's even harder. <clears throat> I've told you multiple times from other Christians that I've been hit pretty hard with pretty deep wounded words. Um, and in a way, I feel I've, I'm happy for them because they don't apparently are, e are either faking it. They don't know. They don't understand the depths. They've never had to deal with the depths of depression or, or their, their spouse or kid has never went through it. And so they, what you don't know, you judge. Um, that's every, everything in life. What I've realized is the only person that I want, that I care of their opinion is God. Now, I want my husband to love me. I want my family to love me, my friends to love me. But most importantly, I want God to love me. I want him to look down and say, that's my girl. Um, that's what's important to me. And um, I view things now as tests from the devil because I know he's ticked off. Friends, we have a great support system here on this channel and I know that it ticks the devil off that God coming through me and us communicating with each other is just ticking him off because he's losing battles every single day he's losing battles and I actually love it I love it um, I hope this helps we're gonna end this video here friends it's always my heart and hope that you feel this and understand this last part of the video I encourage you if you need to just skip through to the end it's always the last like 30 seconds God loves you I love you your family loves you your friends love you and we need you here. We'll see you in the next one, friends. Bye.